for the spirit of Beren at her bidding, tarried in the halls of Mandos, unwilling to leave the world, until Luthien came to say her last farewell upon the dim shores of the outer sea, whence men that die set out never to return. In this video, I want to discuss this passage and what it means. I will talk about the relationship of elves and men when it comes to the halls of Mandos, why Beren's spirit lingered, and share my view on forces like love and friendship, the theme of this year's Tolkien Reading Day, having power over the so-called natural order. The tale of Beren and Luthien is the greatest love story in the Legendarium, even greater than Sam Gamgee and Bill the Pony, but I won't discuss the quest of the Silmaril in any great detail in this video. That's for another day. What is important is that in the hunting of the wolf at the end of the quest, Karkaroth, the wolf, who had bitten the hand of Beren and swallowed the hallowed jewel, had mortally wounded Beren before being slain, alongside the hound of Valinor, Juan, who aided Beren. This leads to one of the few accounts in the Legendarium of the fate of man after death. The Silmarillion is written from the perspective of the Elves, and it is believed that all men go to the halls of Mandos. Elves, as the firstborn, are not privy to the fate of the secondborn upon death, at least their ultimate fate. In the chapter of Men, we are told that some say men also go to the halls, separate from the elves, and that none have ever returned, save Beren. Elves can be re-embodied and return to the living world. They are bound to the fate of Arda itself, and will exist as long as it exists. For men, it is believed that they leave the circles of the world, not being bound to the fate of Arda. By leaving the circles of the world, they are leaving the physical world, their spirits ascending beyond. And this gift from Eru cannot be overruled by any. According to the elves, only the doomsmen of the Valar, Namo, also known as Mandos, and the king of Arda, Manwe, know their fate for sure. Athrabith Finrod a Andrith sadly missing from the Silmarillion, is a discussion between an elven king, Finrod, and a mortal woman named Andrith. A fascinating conversation dealing with the differences between the elves and men, and their fates. In a strange twist, it says that men go to Mandos without any choice in the matter, to wait until surrendered to Eru. The freedom given to men being temporarily removed. And as with all statements and decrees, there are exceptions because of the freedom of Eru. This is another difference with elves, who are summoned to Mandos but can refuse those summons, but are left without the freedom to leave the circles of the world. When speaking of exceptions, Erendil is mentioned. He reached Aman, a place where no living man was allowed to go, yet he had not made his choice of kindred at that time, being half-elven. But the case of Beren is truly exceptional, a mortal man who died and returned to actual life. Still it is quite mysterious, as we are explicitly told that no mortal man ever saw Beren following his return to life in Middle-earth. Then Beren and Luthien went forth alone, fearing neither thirst nor hunger, and they passed beyond the river Gelion, into Osiriant, and dwelt there in Tall Galen the Green Isle, in the midst of Adurant, until all tidings of them ceased. Beren's tale is exceptional in more ways than one, which is clearly why it is told to us. He, like all men it seems, was brought to the halls of Mandos, but he tarried there. And with that word, tarried, we are being told that he should already have gone to where men would go after. It wasn't by the will of the Valar that he remained, nor was it the Valar 
who eventually gifted him a second chance at life. Despite them offering the choice to Luthien to take Beren with her back to Middle Earth, the will of Eru was revealed to the King of Arda. Eru being the only authority who can make such changes. Tolkien tells us this in the chapter of Beren and Luthien. Mandos having no power to withhold the spirits of men that were dead after the time of waiting, and having no power to change the fates of the children of Iluvatar, went to Manwe, the one who governed the world under the hand of Eru, and he sought counsel in his inmost thought, having the will of Eru revealed to him. Now this same chapter says that at the bidding of Luthien, Beren remained and was unwilling to leave the world until she came to say her last goodbye. If men must go to Mandos following their death, and must wait for a time before being surrendered to Eru, then I suspect it must be different for each spirit, meaning it is not some set period of waiting. The will of the spirit, the deeds in life, the reaction to death, the cleansing of the spirit, all must play some part in the time spent there, eventually being surrendered to God when the time is right. Just as elves can remain in the halls until they are healed, or the time is right to make their next choice in Arda, I speculate men have some period of spiritual healing. This is where it seems to me that a power beyond decrees and rules changed the fate of Beren and Luthien. Beren was so set against leaving the world without seeing his love again, that her bidding that he not leave somehow halted the natural process. This could be a power beyond our mortal understanding, the freedom of men to shape their own destiny beyond the music of the Einar, perhaps coupled with true love, the ultimate happiness of Beren only being possible if he at least saw Luthien again, or ideally dwelt with her eternally despite the different paths of their respective kindreds. We see the power of love and friendship in the fate of many other figures, becoming exceptions to the rules. Frodo sailed over the sea at the end of the Lord of the Rings, granted the authority to do so, through at least the plea of Arwen to Gandalf. But Gandalf had great affection for Bilbo, another ring bearer like Frodo, and Tolkien tells us that Bilbo's journey west was about more than just bearing the one ring he was necessary for the sake of Frodo. It is difficult to imagine a hobbit, even one who had been through Frodo's experiences, being really happy, even in an earthly paradise, without a companion of his own kind. And Bilbo was the person that Frodo most loved. What about Sam? Yes, he is another of the ring bearers, briefly also being granted the authority to undertake such a journey, as adumbrated by Frodo. But couldn't it be more than that? Wouldn't Sam need to see Frodo again after all these years? What if Bilbo had already passed and Frodo was alone for what was left of his life? The happiness of both Frodo and Sam may be dependent on Sam crossing the sea. Those powers greater than the set rules coming into play, their love and friendship earning such an exception to the so-called rules. A final example could be Legolas the Elf and Gimli the Dwarf, with Tolkien going as far as to say that Gimli was a unique exception, a dwarf but a friend of Legolas and servant of Galadriel. From my own readings and understanding of the text, I can't see Gimli standing on the shore watching Legolas leave. He must go with him. They haven't left each other's side since becoming friends during the War of the Ring, all those years before. Why would they separate now? Gimli's love for Galadriel also being important to consider. To me, it makes sense that he would be given permission to sail west, to enjoy his remaining time in happiness with those he cares about the most. A reward for past deeds 
and the honour of being an elf friend. Otherwise, he passes into death in grief and misery. With Beren, others could not stop him from receiving the gift of Eru, but could he stop himself? Could he tarry a while longer through the strength of his love for Luthien, seeking that final moment of happiness that could not be achieved otherwise, not being ready to leave? Throughout their story, fate and chance play their part, and their love always bringing them back together, despite the interference of others. How could death now keep them apart? Luthien is then given a choice, being allowed to dwell in the Blessed Realm, forgetting all grief. Or she can return to Middle-earth with Beren, with no guarantee of happiness, being given the freedom of the race of men. She would be mortal, subject to a mortal death alongside Beren. Why wasn't Beren given a choice? His choice was made. His stay in Mandos, his refusal to leave, was a declaration of his choice. No question had to be asked of him. Thus the fate of Beren and Luthien become joined, in grief or bliss. They have been together in every other way, and now they are together on the path to leaving the circles of the world at the end of their life on Earth. Beren was exceptional, not in terms of men going to the halls of Mandos, but exceptional in that his love for another transcended the power of the rules that had been set, love becoming a power great enough to change destiny. On March 25th, the One Ring was destroyed, and Sauron was defeated. This date is Tolkien Reading Day, organised by the Tolkien Society to encourage the promotion of Tolkien by reading your favourite passages. Merely reading a passage would probably result in this video being taken down by the Tolkien estate, so much for the noble goal of promoting Tolkien. Instead, various channels that like to talk about Tolkien have organised a playlist focused on the Tolkien Reading Day 2022 theme of love and friendship. I happily take part in this without endorsing or supporting the society or the estate and those who oversee those organisations, and have linked the playlist in the description. I hope you enjoyed my contribution. <laughs>